Now uh, we're beginning. What did, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a light up Christmas necklace thing. It's Christmas lights. They're festive. It's like you're trying to signal traffic to slow down. There's an accident ahead. I'm signaling Santa to bring me a hippo. Well, Santa's not bringing anybody nothing. He's he's stuck in Cuba. Customs nope. got him. Well, he can stop in Colombia and grab one of Pablo Escobar's hippos and bring it to me. <laughs> oh, that would okay. Yeah, that would work. Totally got it all worked out. Uh, how are you doing tonight, Tara? Are you having okay. a Merry Christmas? So far, spent some time with my family yesterday, which was lovely. Work today, which was surprisingly easy. It wasn't really that busy. And I do another family thing tomorrow. So it's funny you say, you know, I spent time with my family. It was lovely. Uh oh, it's weird how many few, well, how few people on on watching or involved in this just go, oh, I love spending all that time at the holidays with my family. I like my family. I mean, we're all crazy people, but my nie my nieces and nephews are awesome. They're like, I, I, I filmed an awesome little video yesterday of me chasing my nephew around because he didn't want his picture taken, doing the bad crocodile hunter voice. And I tried to put it up on Twitter, but Twitter wouldn't load the video. Oh, fuck Twitter. Twitter's bad. Well, Tara, um... Tonight that we've already got the, the Christmas hasn't even fucking started yet. And it's already started for us. Well, it started in some parts of the world. <sighs> yeah, but this is there's some people got an early jump on it. We already have stories tonight. Yeah, yeah, we do. Mm. Already got story. We got stories. Are you ready to do this? Let's do this. All right. Let's do it. Come on now. Computer's being all stupid tonight. All right, here we go. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, and brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And <laughs> the Holy Hippo, yes. The Holly Hippo, technically. <laughs> Funny. Funny. Look at those teeth. Those are teeth for rending flesh. So, um, I got a, a brief one we're going to cover just to touch on um, that hurt me so badly. Um, it's Christmas related, that's for sure. I'm not no more lead in on this, but just yeah, that, that's I <sighs> really, really people. What? Apparently, people don't believe in reindeers. What? Um, Twitter searching the phrase on Twitter uh, for reindeers are real brings up hundreds of tweets from people who neither know that reindeer are real nor how to properly pluralize the word reindeer. And as the theory that reindeer are named after their connection to Father Christmas, Christmas, as it happens, is false. I, I'm looking at some of these tweets. I've got to put them on the screen because they are just amazing. Um, are reindeer real or just they are they just regular de re deer? I can't believe I just now found out reindeers are real. My world makes sense. Wait, are reindeers real? Reindeer, I genuinely th used to think they were not real, just in films. Realization that it's just flying reindeer that are made up. And of course, if reindeers are real, why are people so quick to dismiss the idea of a horse with a horn, but believe in a massive cow thing with two horns? Cow what? thing. What cow the thing. hell does that even mean? What are you talking about? Unicorns. No, but the massive cow thing with what? The, that's a that's not a deer. Yeah, apparently they think deer are members of the bovine family. Oh, my God. And that unicorns are real. They probably think that because they're soul bound to one. Oh, uh, yeah. 
So I want to get the uh, non-Christmas crazy out of the way tonight first. Then we'll dive into the Christmas crazy. But, oh, someone uh, went out and got something on their Christmas list, in a way. Um, handyman kidnapped for repairs. Oh, I saw this. This is awful. A Northern California handyman was allegedly beaten and forced to do repairs around the home of two suspects. Police say lured him to their home after a dispute about work he'd done for a relative of one of the alleged assailants. Jason De Jesus is that I hope that's De Jesus because otherwise it's De Jesus. Um, fuck with De Jesus, De Jesus, fuck you. I would take that gun away from you, stick it up your ass, and pull the trigger until it goes click, 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 click. Um, and Chanel Trodson uh, have been arrested on charge of suspicion of assault, kidnapping, and false imprisonment. Couple held the man at their home for seven hours before he daringly escaped from a nearby gas station where they had taken him to buy supplies. After some conflict between the victim and one of De Jesus' relatives, De Jesus requested the victim's presence at the house to conduct, quote, repair work on an appliance for him. When the alleged victim arrived at the suspect's house, he was immediately assaulted, held against his will, and repeatedly threatened for several hours. He was forced to repair appliances in the kitchen and do other repairs around the house. You know. My condo needs not a, work, a lot of work. This is not how you do it. It might be. I can't afford to hire somebody. No, 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 no. See, there's a reason. I can afford a bottle of chloroform. Okay, I've got two words why you don't do this. Tony Stark. Remember they kidnapped Tony Stark and they put him in a cave and they said, build us a missile. And he built a yeah. suit of. Yeah, they also gave Tony Stark like weapons grade chemicals to work with. Do you know what you can do with an unshielded microwave? I just need my sink fixed. <laughs> He'll have a wrench. You I'm, I'm serious. You, you 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 do not. This is why if you are, if you don't know something, don't try to kidnap someone who knows more than you to force them to do something because they know more than you and they're probably okay, smarter no, hang than on. you. He didn't get away because he built some ingenious no, MacGyver-esque he device. He got away because these dumb fuckers left him unattended and went into the gas station to get Funyuns. OK, see, and that was his mistake. He could have just like, you know, been all right, I'll fix all your shit and come out with like this. This giant machine o' death with like a blender and a hair dryer and a microwave and, you know. Yeah, but he didn't have to do that. He just waited until they got the munchies. Well, he wasn't creative enough. Well, that uh, Hibernica in the channel says something very smart. What if he booby trapped all the things? You know, it's not that hard to do. You just strip a little wire. You connect it to the metal part. They pick, they try to get their coffee pot. Suddenly they're on fire. What just moved? Santa's not in Cuba. Santa's crashing out on my couch, actually. Oh. Yeah. What are you doing with Santa? Getting a hippo. I told you I couldn't afford a bottle of chloroform. Moving on. So, um, it's nice to know that even at the holiday season, we have our generic, random, normal, crazy. Um, this one comes to us from Los Angeles. And this keeps happening. This is another one of those. Why does this keep happening? Naked man arrested for allegedly stomping car in downtown Los Angeles intersection. What is with all the naked Godzilla wannabes? Man was arrested 645. Uh, phone camera video broadcast by ABC7 showed the man atop a red Mustang that had its windshield smashed man whose name and age was not made avail avail uh, available was arrested for suspicion of felony vandalism. Witness told the station the man emerged from the building's elevator before he went into the street and jumped on the car. The, man, the car's driver punched the man in the face. Police soon after arrived and arrested him. Um, reported near the driver, the female pastor, and the Mustang were answered. Punched him in the face. That's He's lucky that's all they did. I'm sorry. I, you know what I keep in my car at all times? Because I, I keep I, I've got some flares. I've got one of those plug in lights that, that you connect to your uh, light socket. I've got an emergency really? kit. I've got uh, really? some tools. What? 
flares? Yeah. You know what I have in my car? About 16 empty McDonald's bags and probably 40 empty Pepsi cans. But also what I have is a pair of gloves. Work gloves. Heavy work gloves. Just in case, you know, you need some grip when you're changing a tire or something. You drive a van. Yes. Or you drive a van full of equipment with which you could kill people. Yes. Or in this case, you put on the gloves and you don't punch him in the face. He's naked. Punch a little lower. What I'm trying to make you understand here is you drive a murder mobile. I do. You say that like that's unusual. This is America. Okay. It's somewhere in the Constitution that I can do that. Just, you know, you're probably lucky America's Most Wanted isn't on the air anymore. Uh, Okay. Why would... Why do you have road flares? Where do you even get road flares? They come with like, you know, as um, emergency kits. You go to Walmart, you get like an emergency driver kit. It's got road flares in them. Why do you need those? In case you, your car breaks down and you need to mark it so that the truckers don't slam into you when you're on the side of the highway. There's this thing that they put in cars. It's a little button on your steering wheel. They don't always lights, work. And it makes blinky lights happen. Yes. So that you don't have to set things on fire near your car. And if your alternator is dead, your battery is dead, and you can't turn on the emergency lights. I just don't like you having fire. Well, that's your problem. Or a murder mobile. Yes. I said, why would you? You're naked and you're trying to punch through glass on a vehicle. None of this seems like. Car is going to be naked guy in at least like 80 percent of fights. What are those 20 percent of fights where the naked guy would beat the car? It's a crazy world. He could pee in the gas tank. Car loses. Yeah. He could ejaculate on the door and ruin the paint job, which we learned last week. Eat right through the paint. Uh, There are a few scenarios in which naked guy beats car, okay? Really? In most cases, I'm thinking the car is going to win, though. Really getting into the holiday spirit there. All right. Um... Next up is some business news that's just. This is just creepy, and I guess it's kind of uh, related to the holidays. You know, people very, very far away. You can't travel to see your family. So you do like we're doing right now. You do a Skype video chat. You say, hi, grandma, here's your kid. This kind of takes it a little further than I'm quite comfortable with, and we'll get into why. Microsoft has a creepy patent that lets you hug someone over the internet using a robotic pillow. Technology uh, requires using battery powered pillows. I'm going to say that again. Battery powered pillows and it'll be owned by Microsoft. Um, This would let people use connected devices that simulate all kind of human interactions, such as hugs, handshakes, grabbing documents and writing on a whiteboard. And what is the one thing we do immediately when, yes, Jyla got it. The first thing we do when we get a hold of a new technology. Can you fuck it? Can you fuck it? Because this thing says it will hug, handshake, grab documents, and write on a whiteboard. Yeah, there's going to be some fucking involved. What I'm more worried about is we're just one step closer to that awful Bruce Willis movie where people never left the house. They just sent cyborg cyborg copies of themselves out into the world and like remote controlled them. Yeah, like we're just we're all going to be job of the hut in 20 years. I don't like that specifically because if I'm out in public and someone pisses me off, I want to be able to hit them, not their robot. But you'll be a robot, too. Not necessarily. I'm walking. I lost I lost 30 pounds this year, man. I ain't getting no fucking robot. I'm just saying it's getting to the point where like the norm is going to be that like people don't actually like Demolition Man, where instead of having sex, they put on virtual reality helmets. We're getting there. 
We're sending hugs over the internet. <sighs> hugs today, orgasms tomorrow. Because, you know, we're not maladjusted enough as a society. Well, just hug people, just hug people, <laughs> just walk up and hug actual people. Well, it's it's time to get into the Merry Christmas. Christmas. That's my advice to you. Walk hug up someone. and hug actual people. Yes. Just ask first, you know, because go forth, go forth and hug and the world will be a better place. Don't just hug random people because they might get cranky at you. Well, I didn't say random people. I said other people. You can hug your mom. Okay. You can hug your brother, your sister, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You can hug your coworkers. Don't hug a cop without asking first. Just saying. They don't sometimes they don't like that. OK, so we're into the Christmas stories now. And uh, I was just what we uh, have you watched Christmas Vacation this year? National Lampoon's Christmas. Have you ever watched it? I saw the part with the cat. Oh. I'm buying you Netflix is what I'm doing. I have Netflix. Then how do you not? All right. Is um, it on Netflix? There's I'm a, not a big Chevy Chase fan. Chevy Chase kind of annoys the crap out of me. There's a wonderful scene in there where Clark W. Griswold lights his house in this amazing, bright, ridiculous brilliance. And we all thought that was a bit much. Well, this person, this lady in New Orleans has a much more subtle way of annoying her neighbors. Just one little letter. Well, one little finger and. Woman's Christmas lights <laughs> give neighbors the finger. Louisiana woman ran afoul a foul of police when she gave her neighbor an unusual holiday greeting. Sarah Childs did a dispute with some of her neighbors in Denham Springs, so she decided to send them a message for their decorations. Neighbors complained and police threatened to arrest her. So she and a civil liberties union of uh, Louisiana su sued the city. Judge ruled in her favor. Um, Childs erected amazing. <laughs> Childs erected the lights on her roof last month. She had removed them twice. Once after police officer said she could be fine. Another officer threatened to arrest her. Um, she got the ACLU in on this shit. Yeah. The Fuck ACLU. Yeah. Doesn't have anything better to do than defend some lady's right to flip off her neighbors in Christmas lights. Well, you know, I'm kind of with them on this because there was no law against it. And they were just trying to make her stop because it was annoying them. Too fucking bad. Don't piss off your neighbors. She's not coming over to your house. She's not setting fire to your pets. She's just telling you in very bright 60 watt terms exactly what she thinks of you. I can get behind this and send in the send in the cops after her. That's just dude. Don't piss your neighbors off. She says, fuck you. Deal with it. Good fences make good neighbors, said Robert Frost. Oh, Phantom Roxas. I knew that was coming. Shiny finger! You, I don't know if you get that one. It's it's an anime thing, but it's, it's yeah. Sorry. It's a thing. It's hilarious, though. Um. So, yeah, it, I, I love... Okay, I've got to bake it larger because this is just kind of precious. I love how even on the news article... They've blurred out that one finger. Yeah, because there's no way you'll be able to tell what. <sighs> OK, well, you know, it's called the season of giving. It's it's when you're supposed to love your neighbor and be be nice to people, be welcoming, be be go know. forth and hug. Yes. Um, but normally you, you they offer you. You don't take it upon yourself to assume burglar ate pastry played darts and turned on christmas lights uh daniel bailey 32 uh walked in the driveway of a home in troy township after at 4 a.m after residents called police to report an intruder bailey said he'd run out of gas and knocked on the door of the home but went inside when no one answered First mistake. Residents say they awoke to Bailey knocking on a bedroom door, walked out to see him on the stairs playing with their cat. After telling Bailey to get out, the residents turned, found the Christmas tree. Other lights had been turned on. Candles were lit and a TV turned on in the living room. Coffee cake inside the cabinet was found at half eaten on the counter. 
It also appeared Bailey had played a round of darts on the board in the garage and taken gas caps off the lawnmower and three vehicles. You know who gets to come into your house and eat shit at Christmas time? People you invite? Santa. Santa. He's the only, the only person coming to your house when you're asleep and eat your food without you knowing about it is fucking Santa. Well, no, you know about it because you leave cookies out for him. Right. This guy, let's, let's look, this, he doesn't look like Santa to me. He, he didn't just even kind of at home. Right. Okay. Why was their door unlocked? Oh, okay. That's not one of the, you know, you, sometimes you forget. Sometimes you forget. But well, all right. I've I've woken up in the morning and found my the door to my condo actually sitting six inches ajar. Mm-hmm. And gone, wow, I totally slept with the door open all night. Not unlocked. But the best part about this. Oh, I'm really glad I don't live in a building full of murderers and rapists. I love or it. own anything terribly valuable. I love how he opened up not just both of their all of their three of their cars, but also the lawnmower and like raided their fridge inside. Police get found two cans of beer, a can of soda, two frozen dinners, three frozen pizzas and a box of Hot Pockets and a box of mozzarella sticks that are reportedly taken me from the freezer inside and a partridge in a motherfucking pear tree. You know why? The residents did not claim the two glass marijuana pipes that police found in Bailey's car. Damn. Christmas munchies. Oh, and uh, Bailey became irate and combative while being moved to a holding cell at the jail. Really, dude? What'd I do? What the fuck did I do? I thought this is America! We have way too many good stories where people just break into people's homes and, like, chill out. (laughs) Yeah, it's... They just break into someone's home and make themselves a snack and, you know, fire up real housewives or something. That's not okay. Go to your own home. I I think our our last story is probably the epitome of not okay. And I'm going to warn you, this one's got an autoplay on it. So you're going to have to watch it when it starts up just on your end. Yes, I know. Boo. Um, You know, lots of places like to decorate for the holidays, but... Just because you don't like the decoration doesn't mean you can uh, take it. Oh, this is auto played about six times since he went on the air. Customer sets Christmas tree on fire at Denny's. San Antonio police are looking for a man who set a Christmas tree on fire at a local restaurant. Officers tell News 4 this happened at a Denny's restaurant. Uh, Customers waiting on his check and became so upset that he set fire to the Christmas tree next to the register. Okay, you know what the rest of us do? We don't leave a tip. Look. Simple. You go in for the early bird special. You have your Hobbit slam. You got things to do. You got Matlock to watch. You gotta get out of there. Or the you don't have time to fuck around waiting for them to give you your check. Or the Gandalf Gobbler. I actually have had a Gandalf Gobbler. It's not very good. Thought Ian McKellen was gay. He is. I'm in trouble. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. And here I welcome your angry letters. Um, At least it's not me for a change. Why? Why? To burn the Christmas tree. He doesn't go to the manager. He doesn't go up there and ask for his check. He doesn't. You know what? You could also stiff them on the tip. All of, some of these are douchey options, but they are still options that are considered in our culture to be reasonable. Setting fire to the Christmas tree. I don't see. It. How? Well, you know, he wanted attention. Yeah, I don't really have, I don't really have an explanation for that. I don't really understand how that's going to, I mean, it's going to 
it's going to seriously up your check because you're going to be paying for that Christmas tree now. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to get you that check any faster because you're going to go to jail. I know that 4 a.m. in Denny's is a special place. Where the food is probably better than it is at Denny's. So we've, we've both done the 4 a.m. at Denny's before. Yes. It's, it's just a part of it. Denny's you, is a vile place with I don't, I don't really know why people go to Denny's. Because like, at 4 a.m. it's the only thing open. I guess. It's either yeah. that or Waffle House. You don't want to. We don't have Waffle. Waffle House up here. You're lucky. But we have a really good diner like 100 feet from my door that's open 24 hours and they have flan. 4, 4 a.m. at Denny's is a strange place. Well, it's like all fucking LARPers and serial killers. And apparently pyromaniacs. Was this at 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. Sunday. Oh, well, that explains a lot. It's probably a LARPer. Was it you? It was not me. Did you set that Christmas tree on fire with a road flare? Yes, I, w I was in San Antonio this morning at 4 a.m. You might have been. He's got a little tiny TARDIS. And then I immediately got on a plane back here after setting fire to a Christmas tree in a Denny's. Look, I came right back here. You're devoted to your art. I guess we, we've what we learned tonight. Man, don't set the Christmas tree on fire. What do you do next? You go to the nativity and you punt the baby Jesus. Oh, no. Don't set the Christmas tree on fire. No. Um, what else did we learn this week? Don't make yourself at home unless you're at home. Or you're Santa. Santa special dispensation. Even Santa, there are limits. I know. Yes, yeah, Santa's not going to go rifling through your medicine chest and shit. You'd like to think. You'd like to think. Unless he's got a really bad headache or something, you know. And he's not going to eat everything in the fridge. He's pretty much like, okay, I got my cookies and my milk. I'm good. Yeah, I don't really see Santa as being a hot pocket man. No. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, and I say that with the connotation that hot pockets have taken on on this show yeah yeah <laughs> um we've learned Hi, Doug. we've learned that if if you do need to have, have you have a problem with your neighbors don't go fuck with them don't kick down their door don't set their christmas trees on fire find a healthy creative way to express yourself a little decoration some electrical work you're all good to go and the ACLU. Yeah, fuck, I love that. I fucking love that. It's the holidays. Of course they're helping. We learned that people don't know that reindeer are real. Holy shit. Yeah, that, and that baffles me because we are currently in an age where you have at your fingertips access to more information and knowledge that at any other point in human history. Use the Google. Reindeer. Are reindeer real? Oh, I guess they are. What do you know? That's the thing. We have all this knowledge and yet we are, we are, it's like we're becoming stupider. We were actually talking about that at my sister's yesterday. Like my brother-in-law was saying he sets reminders on his phone to remind him to take out the garbage at night before, like on the nights when he has to put the cans out. And he, he was telling me, he's like, no, start using your reminders for everything. And I'm like, you know, humanity marched on for hundreds and thousands of years. Maybe not that long. I'm, I obviously didn't study anthropology, but humanity marched on for a long time without the benefit of iPhone reminders. And I just feel like, we're getting dumber and dumber and dumber. We're sending hugs over the internet. We need reminders to tell us to take out the trash. Like, Wally, -E, totally happening. Here's We're going to be living in some fucked up amalgam of Wally -E and idiocracy here's a before perfect, I'm even a member of AARP. Here's a perfect that example. Was bleak. Merry Christmas. Here's a perfect example of how we're getting dumber. Name one phone number other than your own that, that you know. Yeah, that's a bitch. They're all programmed right in here. Yeah. Put a gun to my head. I cannot tell you my mother's phone number. Okay, Captain Wolf is right. 911. Okay, fair enough. 
Fair enough. Um, yeah. And finally tonight, we've learned that Tony Stark built this in a desert. <laughs> with a box of scrap. <laughs> okay. That's not anybody's real phone number anymore, guys. They had to stop using that one. Good call, though. If you don't know how to fix something, kidnapping someone is not a low-cost means of solving this problem. I don't know. I'm kind of with them on that. You just don't take them with you on your Funyuns run. You chain them to the toilet. All right. Obvious. All right. You, you, you kidnap your handyman. I got Santa on my couch kidnapped. And when your TV... A hippo. And when your TV explodes, don't come crying to me. 